what exactly are digital twins and why are they important for fashion and retail? Stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna share with you examples of 3D asset innovation and how this emerging technology is being used to market and merchandise fashion. By the end of this video, you'll know more about digital twins as well as meet one company that is pioneering virtual production in this space. For the latest insights and expertise on the future of fashion and retail, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I release new videos on Fridays. Now roll that intro. Welcome back, my name is Amanda Costco. I've been reporting on digital culture since 2015, specifically on the many ways technology is transforming the $2.4 trillion fashion industry. First off, what exactly is a digital twin? So for more on this subject, I'm going to introduce Kelly Vero, the head of game development, fashion, and collections at So Real. So Kelly, thanks for chatting with me. Hi, I'm really glad to be here. So for those who don't know, what exactly is a digital twin? A digital twin basically is a physical object like this that lives in a digital space. So everything that you see in any kind of uh, physical format, you should be able to find in a digital sense. But we know that not all objects have been digitally replicated yet. So how are digital twins being used in fashion and retail specifically? We're really pushing the edges of technology in fashion because we're doing everything that you can possibly think of from garment provenance. That means going right down inside fibers to find out what thread counts are in uh, textiles all the way out to the sort of macro, which is the AR retail, where you can select objects directly from stores and have them either drone delivered or whatever to your house, but you can actually see the dimensions of the object before you buy it. So it's literally like walking into your high street store, um, but you're doing this completely in a digital space. So this changes everything. This changes how we make uh, items, for the fashion industry and it changes how we present them to the end user and the purchaser and consumer. Absolutely and as you know like we need change right now in the fashion industry just given the way that the world has kind of <laughs> turned out right now. So how do you actually go about creating digital objects and digital twins? Um, do you start by looking or referencing an item in real life and then going about replicating it or how does it work? We put an item through a kind of replicator. We put it through a full scanner and we take images of the uh, object, what it looks like on the outside. So a lot of people are doing this. This is called photogrammetry. But actually what's special about what we do is we go directly into the object itself. So we use enough power to be able to look at everything from how zippers are put together to how a pair of jeans have rivets. We can go down into various materials and really get the essence or the DNA of what that actual object is. Then afterwards, we use machine learning um, and AI to be able to put those segments back together. What this means is uh, for the fashion industry is actually where, you know, the fashion industry on making some killer mistakes about how they're managing or dealing with fashion waste. What the virtual world and the digital world allows us to do is be able to make some real changes and make some savings to fashion technologists, designers, uh, retailers worldwide. So they don't have to send samples halfway around the world. So they don't have to create things that they you know, later have to throw away. We can do it all in digital now. But what are the challenges that are unique to creating 3D assets that are supposed to eventually fit the body? I mean, I know that there's Lots of advancements in face tracking, but when it comes to body tracking and understanding how augmented reality clothing looks on the body, it, it's a challenge because everybody's different. I want you to be able to do a few things. Um, we have to create objects these days that are sort of maximum accessibility. And that means that that carries a lot of information. So your um, Hermes Birkin bag, you know, or your Kelly bag, which is worth a fortune now, is going to be worth even more in a few years. But how do you know? We can put into objects these days 
economic principles which change the entire fashion game. It allows people to be able to drill down to data in ways that they've never been able to before. And our objects, particularly for guys that are designing or um, girls that are wearing, it, it allows us really to be able to ensure that the fit is exact to our bodies. We don't have to have this worry anymore about saying, oh, I'm a 14 on the bottom, I'm a 10 on the top. These days, we don't have to worry about this stuff because what, what digital technology allows us to do is take a snapshot of who we are right now, not who we are when we were like 14 or who we're going to be when we're like in our 50s and 60s, but who we are right now and carry that story throughout our life. So, I, I mean, for a few years now, I've been the type of person that's been keeping a, a lot of information, a lot of data about myself because I was sort of head scratching thinking, how am I going to get clothes to fit me? Like, what if I suddenly, you know, drop sort of 10 pounds or whatever? Like, how do I then go into a store and just buy something? I kept track of it in Excel spreadsheets, really nerdy. But actually, there's technology out there now that literally uses LIDAR scanning, looks at your body and thinks this is your fit. And so not only is this your fit, but also these are the types of things that are really going to suit you. They're going to suit your face shape. They're going to suit your pink hair. They're going to suit your dark glasses. You know, they're going to suit your like crazy headphones and your weird red living room. Anything that's lifestyle related or fashion related now carries this immense amount of data and we can make it fit you. It's just whether you want to buy it. <laughs> and so, you know, So Real has an app that's available on the App Store right now. Folks want to download it and try a sort of demo version of what you could do. But walk us through what sort of like full blown user experience that So Real is aiming to create for, um, for the customer experience. Well, I think, you know, like I said at the top of the conversation, what we want to be able to do is change the way that people design. So, you know, we're kind of thinking about 20 years from now, how we're going to be designing clothes rather than looking at what we're going to be doing tomorrow. So some of the things that we came up with really are ways, I suppose, that we can um, access detail of shoes that's like a really big one because it's not enough these days to just go to a retailer and just say hey i really like those shoes i'll take them you want to know that they fit you want to know that it's the color scheme that you really want and you want to know that when you get these shoes home they're the shoes that you ordered so by putting the actual physical item through our scanning technology we're, we're able to ensure that the digital output is exactly the same nothing changes i think that's quite unique additionally we're the only people like on the planet at so real really that have uh, patented this design and are making objects really that that serve this purpose there isn't anybody else that's working in scanning for fashion so that's kind of really exciting for us as well, because it allows us to open up partnerships in a variety of different areas, not just fashion. We can do a variety of different things across verticals and industry that, you know, we've never really thought about before. So we're getting a lot of interest right now. Well, yeah, I bet because everybody's now trying to figure out how to digitize. And so um, as I understand it, in addition to creating digital twins of objects that exist in real life, there also seems to be this appetite right now for digital only fashion. I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram and throughout social media. What potential opportunities do you see here for digital twins in fashion? I was actually just reading an article this morning about um, Ralph Lauren and how they teamed up with Bitmoji to, or Snapchat to release, you know, kind of avatar version of the clothing that you can buy in real life. So you and your avatar can twin. So how much of this sort of um, online representation of our fashion selves are we going to see in the future? And um, what, what other opportunities do you see here? I think it's really cool that you call it our fashion self because I'm just so terribly like a huge fangirl of fashion generally. But, you know, I live in a, a space or a place where, you know, fashion 
in research and development especially and um, working in technology is not at the top of everyone's list oftentimes we find ourselves in situations where we're getting dirty during the day or we've got to get our hands dirty or we're up to our elbows in grease or whatever so we're not really thinking like so much about oh i must be seen in this uh, moschino top like at all times actually our, our virtual or our digital self, our fashion self, is usually a completely different person. So in applications, you know, that I use from Second Life to Avakin Life, even into Fortnite right now. I mean, we saw Travis Scott recently like doing stuff, but wouldn't it have been really cool if we all brought out, you know, our Sunday best, wore like amazing Chanel jackets or an incredible pair of like Gucci fake crop trousers or whatever, and, you know, got ourselves out there and I really went for it in that Travis Scott concert. Well, we can do that now. We can make digital twins super happen, not just in the luxury industries, but for every part of fashion that we're wearing. And that means that fast fashion stops being an issue in the physical and we can allow it to live in the digital. And personally, I believe that fast fashion is a better place in the digital than it is in the physical. I'm sure you agree. Yeah, well, because you don't have to go with the weight when you have it in the digital. Um, I'm just wondering what you think about in terms of these platforms moving forward. Like, will it be, will there be a Facebook of avatars, so to speak, where it was, you know, at one point Facebook was sort of the thing that you needed to be on social media and to be an active uh, social citizen. And I feel like that is becoming true of avatars too, that if someone doesn't have an avatar in the future, then they're not gonna be trustworthy. In the same way that you kind of think it's weird if someone doesn't have an Instagram account these days. Um, so I'm wondering if you think that there's gonna be, like, is it Fortnite, is it Animal Crossing? What, which platform um, should brands be looking at if they're thinking about getting involved in this space? I mean, TikTok, Instagram, check out. These places are just rocketing right now in everybody's consciousness. But you know, I don't think it really matters because provided that we all slowly become solid digital natives, I think if we start to think about that digital transformation within our fashion self, I'm totally gonna use that like forever now. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> But um, the, if, if we think about ourselves as the fashion self, we have like a golden opportunity now to, to be, you know, potentially taken more seriously in places that require us to be more serious. I mean, look at what happened during the pandemic. Literally everybody, us included, jumped directly onto Zoom. And we've used Google Me and we've got Microsoft Teams. And, you know, it's not a case anymore of people sort of saying, oops, what's that behind me? I'm really, really sorry. I'm just so unprofessional. No, we're thinking like totally professional people in a real virtual environment. Also, you know, in the advent of mixed reality, people are really caring about how they look now when they're in these situations. So whether we're talking to people through HoloLens or Oculus, whether we're having a campfire, meeting at Burning Man, we want to know that we look like the best version of us that we can possibly be. And I think, you know, in a sense, that will really help us to be able to develop better touch points and connections, not just with our fashion self, but also with our mental health, because the more positive we are about how we feel and the better well-being that we have in our virtual environment, the better it's going to be for everybody. Interesting. Well, you paint a very exciting picture about this future, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And if people want to follow you and stay in touch with the work that you're doing, what's the best way to do that? Well, you can follow us on Twitter. We're at SoReal underscore AG. Um, we're on all of the socials. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. And uh, yeah, you can download our demo directly from the Apple and Google stores. Um, and we just hope that, you know, you have fun with our twins and you have a really good time with our digital objects. And you let us know what it is that you want, because as we grow, there's got to be things that are in the back of someone's attic where they're like, oh gosh, I really wish that you would uh, scan in my Lan Van cardigan from 1975 <laughs> or whatever that I got from a from a Buffalo Exchange or a secondhand store. I would be so happy to do that for you. Right. I mean, we can create an archive now that's accessible to every fashion. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Different 
styles and you can tour collections in totally different ways. So it's a really exciting future, Kelly. Thank you so much for your time. It's not a game, it's a rich thing. Have you ever shopped in augmented reality before? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't be shy, we can start a conversation down there. So now you know more about how digital twins will play out in fashion and retail. As always, any links or additional resources that I've mentioned will be in the comment section below. If you've got a passion for the future of fashion, and clearly you do because you're still here, sign up for our email newsletter. We deliver insights and expertise to your inbox. The link is in the description below. As always, if you love this video, then go ahead and and subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I release new videos. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.